Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to the World Food Day. Thank you all so much once again. The food systems are highly welcome and my minister will assist the investors to succeed in this direction. I wish to inform you that MOFA collaborated with FDA and local government to develop food safety guidelines, which the various assemblies are yet to rectify. We are also happy to inform you that the food safety policy has also been lined and a strict implementation of the guidelines and the policy will go a long way to ensure safe food for all. I again wish to commend the effort of CSIR to reduce the levels of aflatoxin in our foods. In, indeed, greater number of the institutions of the council work closely with the Ministry of Food and Agriculture to ensure safe and nutritious food are made available for Ghanaians. Food, nutrition, import substitution alone, do you know the amount of money that we use to import food in Ghana? Without being hyperbolic, if we change our way, our lifestyle, the way we should train the olfactory nerves, if you didn't know the olfactory nerve is what gives us the sense of smell, if you change the glossopharyngeal nerve, the one that serves the tongue, which makes you appreciate taste, food, we will change the destiny of Ghana. <laughs> Our uh, crave for foreign foods, if we change them, we will be implementing import substitution. That's why when I was appointed a minister for environment science technology and innovation, it looked like all my life thing had congealed into one area that excites me. Of all the political positions that I hold, I cherish this ministry. You know what? <laughs> where we introduced the modified Tonja system, where President Kofo, one of his greatest achievements, was planting a lot of trees, both indigenous and teak trees, nine months there. Then we were challenged to bring health insurance, right from concept to implementation. Then, by some accident of... So I'm here, it's not to promote myself, but to paint a picture to the younger generation that we can do something. This generation belongs to you. Seize it. Those of you in the food industry, you must take the lead. Your minister wants to help. It's a plea. As a politician, my, man, my mandate is to inspire young people. And I, we have to seize the moment. COVID has done us some good, which you might not know. It has provided us the opportunity to reset the button. And I see nutrition as part of the two. We have to avert our mind to the fact that if COVID had continued and everybody, food nationalism was on the horizon. Everybody was coloring their food, how to feed their population. And if we did not have food here, we would be starving. Think far. Lewin said, I cannot think far. But here, yeah, think far. <laughs> Food can be a tool that they can use to manipulate us, and they are using it. But we have an advantage. That's why in Messi, I see all the advantages in here. So uh, look, it gives me a uh, man uh, that I'm so pretending over agencies that have so much potential for this country. CSI, they are a great person here. Look, all the good things that you are touting, the planting for food and jobs. The Nets do not know, no, do not know that maybe some 90, 95% of all the grains that are being planted came from the labs and the field research plots of CSR, Crop Research Institute, and then nutrition, I'll come to you. They were trained like we doctors too. We are trained to be self-effacing, which means when we do something, the paradox is that we do not even want the the public to know. I know and I appreciate that a lot of things are going on through the scientific community in Ghana. But the public does not know. I'm challenging my scientists here. I'm coming, I'm calling for the likeness of the Neil deGrasse Tyson. Have you heard, who has heard of Neil deGrasse Tyson? Please, you can Google now. He's an American astrophysicist. A black American who is a leading astrophysicist astronomer. And the American people, there was a time when they thought that space technology was useless, the government was over investing in that industry. And it took a black man 
a typical person, even when you are thinking of an astrophysicist, the leading, the leading what after Hawkins and all those people, is a black man. He's one of the greatest scientific communicators. He engages. I'm always reading him on, you know, uh, following him on all the social media. I spend my time using the, that tool for useful purposes. And one of my heroes is the, uh, the Grassy Thompson um, Tyson. So we call for all our scientists to assert ourselves. Please, somebody should occupy the public space and educate the Ghanaian public. That science can be used as a tool for development. Nutrition is good for development. Not to talk of that you are what you eat. So you are, you are a reflection of your own nutrition. That is so basic, so I don't want to talk about That is the doctor and me tell. You are what you eat. Everybody knows that. And when they are, you know, when you do not have certain elements in you, nutrition deficiencies, you know what we can get. We know the marasmosis, we know about kosher core. You know that your pro medical problems can be exacerbated by lack of certain nutrition. That's why we know. Every, I believe Ghanaians have no chance of it. But beyond that, as a politician, I know that food is being used as a tool. You know why GMO is a, such a big problem for me to handle? It is not because the science is bad. Please, GMO actually is good. It's after all, it's a protein. Protein, when you boil, you process it, it becomes denatured. And whether it came from some, it's an ethical issue. So we don't want to, but as far as the sciences are concerned, you take away the ethics. GMO is no problem. My problem with facing uh, with the wire research, then the people don't hear it. Look, science without action is empty. And action without science is blind. That's my own concussion. <laughs> so you better assert yourself. A lot of you should be like politicians, like go check whether your constituency you qualify. A lot of you can be even better speakers, better advocates than me. I'm only trying. I'm only trying because I know that I'm a rather quiet cuckoo. Not the other volleyball cuckoos uh, like the guy over there. <laughs> but look, let me end here. And I'm supposed to launch this World Food Day and then the Nutrition Department. Uh, this is my second time of being here since our third time. Nutrition should be the arrowhead of CSR. That's where you interface with the commercial wing. And I want you to take this challenge. That organize yourself. You have all the elements. It's a marketing aspect. You have a lot of potential. Get people, organize yourself, get into the marketplace, and let CSR get it, make lots of money so that the minister can say that in the interest of leveling, we will take some money and go and help some other entities that are not doing so well. This morning, I will not say much, but I will tease you to what food research we are also doing. It may interest you to know that today's program rightly falls on our shoulder. That when it comes to food, this is your hallmark. This is the home for innovation in food. That is what we want you to see. Today, we have invited you that when we go down there, you see something new from food. You've heard about sorghum. You've heard about millets. You've heard about our own indigenous crops. We are putting value to them. And today, we are going to launch four of such products. These are products of our own indigenous cereals that we are adding value to. And these are nutritious foods that can support our nutritional component that we need here. That is what we want to do. And we are doing that to support our SMEs. For Food Research Institute, we say is the home for technologies on food. Just as now, we have developed through the current days about 29 training, different training. We could mention about the chocolate. The chocolate forms part of that. Different trainings that we are offering to SMEs for you to start, we support you and get you on your feet. We have this challenge of unemployment. We believe that with food production, 
we can bring that challenge of unemployment down. And that is what we are doing. When you have ideas on food, bring them. We will concentrate the ideas and make them workable for you to go back. And that is what food research we stand for. We take the idea, develop it, and give it back to you to go and make business out of it. We are looking for enterprises. We believe that when we expand our SMEs within the country, we are going to do more for our country. More people will get employment. We will curtail the idea of unemployment. We will support our food nutrition. We will have more for trade exports. And that is Ghana for us. So we have a lot of problems in the food industry. We have economical problems, foodborne illnesses, and nutritional loss and quantitative losses. For instance, if you have a produce like beans, and then they are, it is infected with an insect, the insect basically feeds on the nutrients in your food produce, and then this leads to um, loss in weight. That is the qualitative aspect. And the quantity, which is the nutrients and the other things that are recovered, are also lost. And if you want to sell it, you sell it at a cheaper price, leading to economic losses. So a lot of traditional techniques have been developed, but there's still there are challenges, drawbacks and limitations. The drawbacks and limitations are it is time consuming, sometimes incapable to distinguish between um, how high or low pathogens or insects are in the product or food. It requires high skills. So if you've not worked on maybe a product like beans before, how do you know if the product is safe for consumption, if it is affected with rivers such as insects or any other thing, you really know unless you've worked on it. And then it requires a long period of time to obtain accurate results. For instance, our microbiological practices or practical very normally do. It will cost sometimes two or three days for you to be able to achieve accurate results. So the solution is a multi-center. A multi-center is basically a device which will comprise of a vibration sensor, a bio sensor and other sensors for you to be able to detect insects and pathogens in your produce. The multi-sensor consists of three parts. A component which recognizes the analyte of the produce and produces a signal. A signal transducer, that one is the one that will convert your information obtained by the components of the analyte to the reader device, and then the reader device will displays the information obtained. The multi sensor will be environmentally friendly, easy to use, and very sensitive. Recently, I was trying to prepare my garden next to and then I, by setting it open, and then I could it. So later I was like, oh no, let me remove the outer part and see what is there. I need to notice them a lot. I'm like, jeez, I wish I had a multi sensor here. So this is how the multi sensor operates. So you have your sample, let's say you are you have your garden egg. So you pick the garden egg and then attach your sensor to it, and then it indicates whether if there's a pathogen inside or not. And then presentation and patient and I must say that it's a very exciting idea. What I thought of is that you are trying to do what complex technology does in the lab and putting it together in a device that is of the size of a cell phone. Do I get you right? Yes. I was excited about you indicating that you're going to use sound as a detector for weevils and that or for other insects and that by the multiplication of this the sound you'll be able to detect the population of the weevils or the insects that are in your food product. But then, when it comes to the issue of pathogens, E. coli and all the other, your, your sensor, it wasn't clear what kind of sensory device you're going to use. And that was what I thought that, oh, if this lady had just stuck with just the sound sensor and limited herself to just insect detection. That would have been great, bingo. But then you wanted a big thing and in trying to get a big thing, I guess you missed out on a lot of things which would include, because you're talking about even chemical um, pollutants and how are you going to do that? How are you going to get a sensor that will be able to measure all the different pathogens and all the different chemical pollutants that could be in a particular food product? Can you help us? They are basically a biosensor. So with a biosensor, it is it will be incorporated in a multi-sensor. 
the biosensor is able to sense a biomed marker. So the biomed marker is specific to the pathogens that is inside the produce or the food. So with this um, biosen biomarker, we we'll sense it and then transduce it through the um, biosensor and then you get your results. So I am also an Einstein lecturer at the Cape Coast Data University. Yeah, so. <laughs> All right, so um, what we are doing here is we are using the NIR to detect mango quality. So here we are looking at levels in mangoes and then um, maturity stage of um, mangoes. So this is what um, NIR, these are, these are some of the potentials of NIR. Apparently we have used, uh, from the team, we have used NIR to detect um, pineapple quality and we are able to tell the maturity stage of pineapple at every stage in time. We've also used it to detect rice quality, to be able to say this rice is actually from Ghana, it's a local rice, or it's coming from maybe Vietnam or any other place. Yeah. So mango is also known as the king of fruits because it has so many health benefits. And so consumption of it is on the increase. You realize that um, our joint news stated recently that Ghana has been able to increase its export of mangoes to by 28% in 2021. So monetary it was 64.6 million USD out of 4.14 billion globally. So this has led to um, the demand of mango and we do our best to grow a lot of mangoes so that we export more in the country. That is employment to the youth because of course these are going to minimize the service losses when you're able to harvest at the right time and then it also encourages the youth now because you know that when they produce their crops they are not going to they do not reject them with the one they want to export. Thank you very much. The objective of the Innovative Challenge Prize is to promote innovative technologies that address food production safety, post-harvest losses, nutrition and environmental issues, while creating wealth, employment and poverty reduction, especially in the rural areas. And the award should be given in the following categories. We have the best artificial intelligence and digitalization solution for the food industry, which we have just witnessed. Two young, vibrant personalities, a male and a female, so gender sensitive, uh, present their case. The judges have asked their questions, they've responded to them. They are now conferring to their maps awarded together and come out with the winner. The winner will take home a prize award from the World Food Program and that will be presented by the representative here. Uh, Wangui Mbugua will present it for us and that is to the tune of 2,000 US dollars. People only see the beautiful side, they see the, the glory side, they don't see the, the working side. It is never take and give, it is always given, so you saw before you, you read. The second award is for innovations that boost the market competitiveness of raw produce and food products, early detection of insects, pathogens, physical hazards like metals, hair, plastics, <laughs> reading about hair. The second award will be the most innovative food uh, businesses startup award and that is innovations that improves the safety and food consumed as the startup company helps to promote better food production with harvest management processing, uh, preservation and packaging solutions for better nutrition, health and improved income. We will. Um, Francis Paddy Lamte came out as a winner. So for uh, this category, which is category C, we have Francis Paddy Lamte as the winner for this category. So I now hand over to um, the WFP representative to give the award for the prize. Congratulations. Yes. Yes.
ye di a ye insist se breakfast de ada ye trimu se pa no nko na ye di no gana for se omo omo nti e metru your instrumentality no omo nti e mi ye nsisa ya adwene sanke be ya body am enu e chi ami ba na abusu wo asankre gwa abusu wo body abusu wo se wi oso mi ami se wi oso no ye ma ya adwen ko ho na bro ni si ye ye conscious effort se ye be consume body e no Udia, ene be ma kuya fo sika abaye nsam na ma yetumi a high laborers na mom se wudi obi abia ne anopa bia can you imagine the number of dollars a ye di ma ebinu wo ukraine ni russia ni nyina no ye di die habit na de ha me ni se sa body ni banchi ni ye gari ni ade no emu dru aduane a wo mu no kra no e e ye better chance flower de mi se obi aduma mi mi se bi nu mu importo na no no mu no mu ya marketers o mu o full chain nu mu no se body e wheat anye ya o bet ma a market any other product to me so o juma also food research e ya one of the csi institute no this is the role na ya person ya ye nu mu hu se food hu hia ye aso man no ye food hu hia ye pa and try ya fresh a garden na ya ya exhibition no na ma hu se ye wo 90 exhibitors awon ba our honorable minister and so big great occasion no ah ya call round the kramo hu near my ya exhibit ni nyina ya technology sir ya generate over the years eh be free food research be free other places ah ni nyina boa amaye nya sa food products all over ya exhibit me sa programming ya pese ya hu se gana ha ya betimi ya nyaduane mu afri ha ahwe ya ho ni ya improve by our technologies na ya be nya various products be free mu aba and the sign ne program aye aye ni nyina kosi pise ye pese ye hu se gana ha ye woni ma bebre ye aduane e betimi aboa yen e wo gana ha ama ye aduane no ne di free ama no ne ba no ye betimi akofom so we are encouraging you as minister say say ye nyina ye start to enjoy gana foods foods aye ye nya dia aye friend indigenous foods what we have grown here ne ye start to this aduane no ne nya taste ye kavu sa taste no for our own food sir it will be so sufficient for us to consume our own. Johnny.